What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle today for another tryst of Murder and Mayhem with Mad Dog McGriddle. In the previous episode, you may recall that we went to Sargoth and we had taken that over because we're trying to help the Nords recover and then they had given us this little location, Ambien, down here, which is pretty sweet. That's a really cool thing of them to do. Now, I don't know, if you're familiar with the game, you'll know that the unlikely relationship between you and the king or the unlikely possibility that you'll be given a fife when a kingdom is in this situation, if you look, the Nords don't have that much stuff. But they've decided to give us a fife, which is very cool. It's a little bit of extra income. They tend to give away Ambien. One of those things that I've noticed from the past, they're kind of like a pharmaceutical company, always giving away that Ambien. But anyways, we don't have any sleeping problems at the moment. In this episode, we can take a look around at some of the guys that we have on the sides of our flanks. And I wanted to take Ismarala. I wanted to take a little bit more land. Al Burke might be a good call, but we're not at war... Unfortunately, I really do wish we were at war with Swati right now. In the previous episode, I had expressed a little bit of a concern that we had taken back all of our ancestral lands from Vagirs at this point, which means we're on even footing with them right now. We have no beef with them. That's why I think we haven't seen any invasions. The enemy tends to be the most aggressive when you have something that used to be theirs. In this case, we don't. So I think the way that I want to spend this episode, let's take a look. Our party morale is pretty bad at the moment, which is weird considering how many enemies we've been killing and how many things we've been fighting. So let's ride off into the sunset over here. We're going to fight with some bandits for a little bit, see if we can't get our morale cleaned out. Oh, we're also low on food. That's the other issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to go on up to Vercheg. We'll grab ourselves some new food, hopefully in nice varieties to help us out with a little morale boost. I don't want the horse merchant right now. In the previous episode, we had gone through and upgraded a lot of the equipment that was given to our companions. So everybody has armored horses now. People are looking a little bit better. And it really does help. If you've ever played the game before, or if you've never played the game before, you will know or not know that giving people better equipment, of course, obviously, logically makes them better in combat. But as you level them up, they become more and more badass. It becomes very, very nice to give them all of the nice hard plate mail and things that the higher tier units have for the other factions. That's one of the things you always feel like you're up against the wall a little bit it because what did I sell right here that was worth so much money something got sold that was worth a ton of cash and I can't decide what it was either way we're back oh it's the lordly nasal helmet okay that's what did it and then a lot of these horses are really really good too oh well we're gonna get rid of all of our horsey supplies at the moment good they have an awesome food variety right here so we're gonna grab as much as we can there are some fishes some cheese Everything's looking pretty good at the moment. I'm going to see if I can trade all this out, though, for stuff that we already have. I, l I don't like losing money when I buy food. And I know you guys have told me to go to the villages and things like that to get food for a little bit cheaper. But I find that that tends to make me circle the map. Just totally crazy style. And people think that you're crazy. They're like, why has he been running around in circles for three or four days? I don't know. He keeps coming back with saddlebags full of fish, though. So apparently he's doing something out there. And I'm like, yes, indeedy. In any case, we've got all of this equipment done and gone with. I should probably give that helmet to somebody, considering it's been sitting in our inventory for like the last 10 episodes. Let's find somebody that can use it. It's going to be Nizar, so we'll throw it on to him. I don't hand equipment to people. I try and throw it at them. Like, you know when you were a little kid and you had those little rotary toy kits where it had X's and O's and you had to throw the sandbags through it? I throw the helmet like that and I attempt to land it like on their head. Now, I have given people black eyes. We have had some complaints lodged with our HR over this practice, but you know what? We don't listen to it because we put those in the special wastebasket where HR requests go, and that's called the garbage can, but I already said it was the wastebasket. But anyways, I watched The Office. I love the fact that they put all their PR complaints and things just straight into the trash bin. They're like, oh, special file. <laughs> oh God, it's amazing. Let's fight these 40 raiders because we need the morale. So I think we'll probably spend the remainder of today Farming out a couple of these Sea Raiders, making sure that our morale gets up back up to like 50 or 60. I'm going to check it after this battle to make sure that it's firmly within the 60s. What we might do then is we'll ride around in Vagir territory with our binoculars of voyeurism, looking for lords that are getting naked up in their windows, find them while they're vulnerable, attack them, and destroy them. That arrow was blocked on accident. You will notice that I totally and completely did not even have my shield up at that point. Oh my god, they are throwing a lot of stuff at me. This is like my musical career all over again. Got that guy, though. He wasn't so lucky. I'm going to try and get... So oh, he blocked right in time with his magical knowledge of me attacking him. Maybe he heard the horse galloping. Let's assume right there that that's what it was, so that I don't have to come up with any supernatural explanations. Like, I don't want to think about my Sea Raider enemies having X-Men powers. Like, the next thing you know, they're picking up their shield and being like, Wham! And charging it like Gambit and then throwing it at me. And wearing, like, weird turtlenecks that are pink and purple. I never understood the design of Gambit, although it was the 90s. So I think, like, 90s... I, I seem to remember, like, weird techno cyberpunk type stuff was really, really in style. For example, clothing designs like Jubilee War, 
in comics, for whatever reason, in the 90s, everybody was wearing, like, cyber stuff, like, weird outfits that were partially pink, black, purple, with huge, giant designer shades that had, like, weird rose-colored lenses and things. It was definitely, like, an Elton John design <laughs> pattern that they were using back then. And I never understood, like, where that came from. I'm, I'm kind of curious who the first artist was that was like, you know what, Jubilee's gonna have giant pink sunglasses because reasons. That's why. The battle is over. Six morale for that one. Not so terrible. We don't have any room for anybody else to hire, but we do have time to pick up some prisoners right here, which will help us. We spent a lot of money in the last episode, so if we can make a little bit more of that scratch, I think we'll be happier. I mean, we're pretty rich right now. I mean, we're not at, like, David Koch levels of wealth, but we are pretty rich as far as Calradia goes. At the moment, though, we should probably get rid of some of these larger groups. Looking at our morale, it's up to 45, so it's not recovering quite as quickly as what we might hope. But in running down some of these sea raiders, we're going to solve that problem. So, I apologize. If this seems like a boring way to spend an episode, we have to do what we have to do, unfortunately. I'm going to let everybody ride out in the front. Actually, no. Let's have cavalry follow me, and we're going to hit them from a differing angle. Because this group is a little bit bigger, so we do have the possibility of sustained casualties as we go through it. We're going to see if they decide to fire at us. Or if they're going to continue moving towards our infantry. And it looks like we've got a 50-50 split right now, which is good. That means we're splitting them in half. We are spreading them widely, giggity. And so, in that case, I think, let's go ahead and sound the charge from this direction. And that's going to create a situation in which they have to decide which direction they want to fight in. Which is going to be very, very deadly for them, no matter what they choose. Two guys down already. Mad Dog McGriddle, she is a killer. She's a killer, a thriller, a winner, chicken dinner, sinner. Definitely a sinner. I mean, we're all sinners, though, so whatever. That sounded a little too overly religious for the tone of this. I don't know. I'm not a religious guy. I don't know if you guys knew that about me, so that's why the diatribe kind of struck me strangely. I don't think I've been to church in like a bajillion years. I grew up with a family. My dad was a preacher. And so that's what you get used to. Preacher's kid. Always in trouble. Having lots and lots of fun there. Did they just reinforce? Because these guys coming down off the hill a little bit weird. Either way, let's extricate ourselves from the numinous conversation and get back to the murder liberalization. I couldn't come up with a word right there. The murderer alization. There we go. I gotta add the syllable slowly. You ever notice that that's how you, if you can't figure out, it's like sounding it out, but for speech. So for example, when you were a little kid and you couldn't read something, your teacher was like, found it out. Come on, little Timmy, you can do it. I believe in you. Assuming your name was little Timmy. I don't know why your parents would name you little Timmy. You'd think Timmy would suffice, but little Timmy apparently was necessary. Maybe you were smaller than normal. I was smaller than normal when I was a kid. I don't judge. There are a number of things that small people like. I'm short. I'll freely admit it. Short people, you know what? You gotta represent when you're short. You gotta keep it real for the short population. But there are things that short people are afraid of. So I'll give you a little look into the mind's eye of short people right now. I am terrified of floods. So for a normal person, you can just stand up. Like, you got a flood, you stand up and touch the bottom. For me, not an option. Terrified of floods. Therefore, it seems like a good survival option to make sure that I'm afraid of floods. I don't know if other short people are afraid of floods, but I sure as hell am. If I can't touch the bottom, it is not cool. You got six more morale right there for that big battle. And a bunch of units that are going to be able to be upgraded, which is nice. It's very, very nice. Let's convert him into a Serenid Guard. I know we have a bunch of warriors who have got to be about ready to move up to veteran status. We've got another Huskar all ready to go. A Slave Crusher who will now become a Slave Chief. And anybody else? Ooh, four more node... Okay, good. Four more node warriors. That sounds like somebody that's guarding a node in Shadowrun. Just saying he's the node warrior. <laughs> I've got a tanker that can hold that thing. <laughs> A tanker that can haul that node. Oh my god. Where is this conversation going? It's going places. That's a nice head you have on your shoulders. We've got 27. I was hoping that other group would jump in so that I wouldn't have to waste my time wiping them out. I am going to leave the Sea Raider camp up right now because the only way that we're going to be able to take the quest to get rid of it and get compensated for our efforts is going to be through Rivacheg. And this produces a nice plethora of guys for us to murder when other, our morale gets low. So... It's nice that we can swing up in here in between episodes or during an episode, wipe out some Sea Raiders, just have a little bit of conversation between all of us, and make sure that we have a nice, beefy morale at the moment. I don't think our morale is going to be able to go much higher than, say, oh, 60. I mean, we've got a pretty big party at the moment. I'm not necessarily a fan of the way morale works right now. I do wish that there was a way that you could get really high morale with large parties. There may be, if you guys want to elucidate me with regards to that or enlighten me. I will definitely appreciate it. All the information you guys give me here on the Nerd Castle, I get better at games. And if there's one thing you know about Splattercat at this point, it's that I really hate getting better at things. Like, I, I prefer just to be utter fail at everything, forever. I don't try and learn things, I don't read wikis, whatever. We just run in headlong and I headbutt things to death. That's how I do it. But when I play here on the Nerd Castle, one of the 
interesting phenomena that I find is that you guys force me to get better at playing games. You tie me down kicking and screaming with zip ties, and I'm like, no! And then you put duct tape over my mouth, and I feel like I'm getting overly descriptive right now. But anyways, you force me to get better at this. Four morale there. That's not so great. However, there are replacement troops here that we can grab. I believe I'm going to go with the peasant woman and the farmer in the hopes that we can end up with a couple more blade sisters. Or sword sisters, or whatever you want to call them, because they're badass. Look, it's a, it's a girl in, it's a girl in full plate mail. If there's anything that gets my heart ticking, that would probably be it, because I'm a giant nerd. Hence the nerd castle. Let's go ahead and go with the prisoners there. We've got full up on gear, so maybe we should head on up out of here. Our morale limit is going to hit a cap at some point, and that cap is not one that I feel like we've reached. So we're negating our party size altogether with food variety in there, base morale, recent events. Extra morale for Vagir's troops. I didn't know we had... Oh, we have Marksmen. That's right. I had forgotten. Let's do one more battle then, just to make sure that we get it up a little bit higher, and that'll future-proof us for a bit. I know. You're going to drink from my skull. You're going to use it as a fluid receptacle, and that's perfectly fine, assuming you can win. I mean, if you manage to beat a force this large, you have earned it, my dear Nordic Raider friend, but I don't think you're going to beat us. I mean, we're still up. You're not going to beat us, and you're not going to eat us, so you better retreat us. And listen to Weedus. I listened to that song the other day. I don't know. If you guys remember that song from like 2001, Teenage Dirtbag, it was like on the American Pie soundtrack. I remember that song. And I remember really, really liking that song when I was like 13 or so. Because it's definitely like a teenage anthem. I definitely feel like that song was one of those things that expressed how I felt in my early college years. But anyways. Just explaining why I use that as part of my rhyme scheme there. It's because I heard Weedus the other day. Not on the radio or anything. I googled it. I sought out the Weedus. I remember having their album. It was like blue on the front with like bubble letters. Definitely remember that album. It was right there alongside... Oh. <laughs> I don't even remember all the albums I had back in the day. Anima of the State. There was a couple in there. Oh god, he's throwing things at me. You stop that right now. I feel like these battles are a little bit mundane, so I have to talk my way through them about just like random stuff that occurred to me during the course of the last couple days. My mom attacked a raccoon with mace the other day. There was a raccoon, so basically here's how this works. So my family has sort of this weird relationship with raccoons because like we're hillbilly folk. And so one of these things that you'll find is that hillbilly folk and raccoons, we kind of hang out together. That's like what we do. Like you see a raccoon and you're like, oh, hey, what's up raccoon? I see you're eating some garbage. Did you see any interesting t-shirts in there that I could wear? Like anything by Tesla or for example, did you see any striper shirts in there that I might wear for the future? And the raccoon will be like, nah, man, there's no t-shirts in here from the 80s. I mean, there are a couple, but they're pretty torn up. I mean, there's an Alanis Morissette in there, but I don't know why you would want to wear that, so I'm just going to defer. And we're like, cool, thanks, Raccoon, for telling us that there are shirts that we can possibly filch from inside the trash can. But anyways, so over the course of time, we had trained these raccoons to, like, eat out of your hand. And this is a true story. I'm, I'm not embellishing right now. I know that I have a penchant for exaggeration. People tell me that I exaggerate a lot, and Jarl Dirajun wants us to come and hang out with him. So let's go do that now that our morale has recovered slightly. And Dirajun, where is he at? I'll get back to the raccoon story in just a second. So, he's near Ismarala. Is that what we're attacking right now? Okay, I'll help out with Ismarala. So anyways, as I was saying, we started feeding these raccoons and you would feed them dog food. And we got to the point where these wild raccoons would just come up and they would take dog food out of your hands. Because raccoons are super smart. I don't know if you knew this, but I had like a fish pond when I was growing up. And the raccoons figured out that they could unplug the bottom. They would take, you know how you have the bathtub plug, like those old rubber stoppers? I forget what they're called. I think they're called bings. I think that's what they called them in Don't Starve Anyways. But they would remove the bing from the bottom of the bathtub or from the bottom of the fish pond. And then once the water had drained out, the fish would just be laying there on the ground. And the raccoons would just eat the fish off the ground. So, that's, I was just trying to tell you how smart raccoons are. I, I know that I go off on diatribes here. Where is Dirajun at? I'm about to fail this quest. There he is. And so we are ready to join you, my friend Dirigun. And as soon as they, it looks like they're thinking about doing the exact same that we were going to command everybody to do, so that's fine. We'll jump in on this siege right now. It's probably going to have a siege ladder anyways, so we'll probably be stuck behind. Oh, we didn't get stuck behind a siege tower. All right, I'll take that. Let me put my archers right there so that they can fire at people on the walls and then everybody else will be up. So we train these raccoons to eat dog food out of our hands. Well, one of the things that we didn't consider is that at a certain point, they would become tame. Or at least like sleep. I thought that I just got hit right there, but it was the guy next to me. That was kind of terrifying. Hopefully, we'll actually get some shots off right now. Why aren't you guys firing? Make with the firing, you idiots. Let's see here. Move forward a little bit. Maybe it's because they're out of range. 
There it is. Okay, they didn't like the firing. They didn't like the quality of the firing range that I had given them. They're being a little bit picky right now. They're being finicky bitches at the moment. But anyways, so they got kind of tame feral. I like to call it terrell, where they're tame with humans, but with other situations, they rapidly go crazy, and they're like, and they fly off crazy raccoon style. And so that's a martial art that you didn't know about. In the trailer parks, that's what we practice. It's called crazy raccoon style. You just kind of get up on one foot, and you're like, and that's how it works. But anyways, back on topic. The raccoons kind of went terrell. And the problem with something going terrell is that you can pet it up until the point that it does something crazy that you don't expect. Like, at a moment's notice, it will drop whatever it was doing, and it'll be like, Alright, so I was okay with this situation a minute ago, but for some weird reason, I now hate this situation and I want to kill you. And so that's what the raccoon would do, and unfortunately, it did that with the dog. And a bunch of the raccoons, it had its kits, I guess, underneath the deck. And so what had happened there is once it had its pups, they became ultra feral. And we couldn't get it out from underneath the deck, and so it ended up kind of seriously wounding one of our dogs, which is a sad thing. And so now my family really, really hates raccoons. And so this raccoon was out on the deck, and my mom, having learned her lesson about trying to tame raccoons, went out there with mace, and she tried to mace a raccoon. I don't know if that would even work, but she missed. The raccoon didn't get maced. It just kind of ran off and was like... Because that's the sound that a raccoon makes. They also hiss quite loudly. It's fairly terrifying when they decide to hiss at you. I mean, we have these special pellets now for a BB gun that are specially made for raccoons. Basically, it's a pellet for a BB gun. And wow, that almost took my head off right there. But anyways, it's a pellet for a BB gun that looks exactly like an arrow that you would fire out of a bow. It's like a little tiny arrow tip that fires from a BB gun. And I guess it doesn't penetrate the raccoon. It just like really hurts or something. I'm not exactly sure as to the physics of this thing, but it says specifically it's for getting rid of raccoons. And so every now and again, you'll go shoot one of the raccoons in the ass, and they'll be like, ah, my ass, and then they'll run off into the distance, and then they never come back. And I bumped my microphone right there, so if you heard like a wom 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 noise, that's what it was. I feel like I'm blocking my own entrance right now, I am. So let's take our archers, and I'm going to back them off to right here, just to give our infantry a chance to get back on the battlefield and do their dance. Because we treat this thing like you just got served. That's exactly how the battles play out. For example, this is the back end of the battle. What you don't know is that before we do this, there's a section of medieval combat that's not talked about very often. It's a little bit like the dwarvish sport of hack -a dragon Like, people don't really know about it. But there's a point in this battle where we come up to the walls and we start dancing. So we get, like, our swatty and two-step on right in front of the walls. And if the enemy is impressed by that, they're like, okay, you can just have the castle. Now, in this case, we went in and we did our swatty and two-step, but then they came back with, like, this crazy vagueier, like, V-step type thing, and then we were like, all right, well, it looks like we just got served. And anybody that's seen that movie knows that when you get served, what comes after that is a fist fight. Either that or you battle for $5,000 in your grandmama's house. It's one or the other. But in this case, we opted for the giant fist fight battle. Our archers appear to be getting the job done, kinda. Although I am gonna need to protect them right now because they are gonna get run over. I really hope we don't lose too many men on this. That would suck. We just spent all that time training up all these Nordic troops, and unfortunately I feel like it's gonna kind of diminish our effectiveness in combat. Why are they facing the wrong way? I mean, I'm not gonna question it too heavily, simply because I'm gonna get freebie kills ors out of this. I'm feeling as though I'm in a very dangerous position right now, so I'm gonna fall back for a minute before I get bardished or something. I don't know if bardishing is a... Oh, I just got bardished in the back of the head. That guy is running through his own lines. Help me! Somebody assist me with this battle! Yeah, crowd surf! Oh no. If I fall off right now and die, I'm going to be very, very upset with the game. That might not be a terrible idea, actually. Oh, that was a terrible idea. Can I get out from back here? Oh, I can. Is that a guy or is that a horse? What is that? I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. It's like a weird proctologist visit. Looks like there's fighting going on over here. So I'm going to be that guy who's just like firing arrows into the middle of this thing. Just being a dick. I hate that guy when I play online. Which I've only done once or twice. You're like sitting around having a battle. It's like that guy when you play chivalry too. You're always playing chivalry. There's always that archer like in the background. Just like shooting into the middle of the fight. And you're like, oh, I hate you so much right now. Why don't you get a sword and fight like a man? How'd you do this? And you just end up saying like ridiculously just <laughs> awful things. Basically, you embarrass yourself. You embarrass yourself quite badly. Like you always feel slightly embarrassed for that guy on Xbox Live 
who just like for whatever reason maybe he had a bad day at work and then he gets home and he's playing battlefield and he just gets aced one too many times and that's it for him he just like loses his shit over the microphone and it's just like <laughs> you don't know what to do for this guy because on one hand he's super obnoxious and you kind of hate him but then on the other hand you know like his day just had to be awful I can't even see right now I'm just kind of spamming directions for the block God, that guy is juking like crazy. You can tell I'm having to focus because I'm getting all quiet. Ooh, got that one off just in time. I almost ate that one for sure. Oh, no. Now I'm cornered up. Yeah, I was going to say. I was hoping that there would be a little crevice back there that I could creep through, but it doesn't look like it. How do we do? 25, 10 killed. That's not good. That's pretty bad. Then again, we lost 160 there, and they lost 151, which means they must have, like, nothing left. I think this place, the last time we looked at Battle Advantage, 1,064. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That is a four-digit numerical advantage. Amazing. Let's get, that's the last guy right there. He's like, we will die on these walls. You cannot stop us. You may slay us, but you will never take our pride. I don't know why I decided to say my R like that with, like, the back of my throat, like, pride. I don't know. It just felt right. In the moment, it felt pretty right. I think I'm just going to let them handle that business. And there it is. There was one guy left. I don't know if I've ever sieged a castle against one guy before. I mean, that guy's got balls of steel because I would have been jumping off the parapets just like, nope, not me. Later. But in any case, we took Ismarala, which is always nice. We got ourselves a little bit of renown. And Dirajun wants me to come talk with him again. So let's go speak to Dirajun if he doesn't outrun me. Looks like he's got like one man left in his group, so unfortunately we can't run him down. God, he's getting out there. Where are you going, man? You gotta slow down. If you wanna talk to me, you can't just send me a letter and then keep on writing and expect me to pick up the slack. I don't feel like that's a very fair proposition. You gotta help me out a little bit. I should go by Ambient and make sure that... There we go. Eight more volunteers. That'll help out for a bit. I feel like we're probably running out of food pretty shortly, though. Where in the hell is everybody going? Oh, they're going to Provin. They're probably going to feast it up. Yep, they just queued music. That's what it is. We're playing goofy music now and wearing crazy hats. There's going to be a tournament here. Although it doesn't look like everybody came here. Hold on, where did Dirajun go? Got a bunch of random lords that don't matter. Where is Dirajun? He's traveling to Nudar Castle at the moment. Alright, I'm okay with that. If I could find... Oh, he went all the way back there. Okay. Let's get back with him then, because it's going to drop us from the quest. And I would like the extra XP, if we can manage it. We're at the point in the game now where every little bit of XP, you really, really, really want to hoard like crazy. You want to be kind of a Scrooge McDuck with your XP and just like surf on it and swim through it and all that fun stuff. Speaking of which, on the DuckTales game for the NES... I never knew that there was a secret ending. It's one of those things that I was never enlightened on. One of those really weird facts that you find out way after the fact that there was like a weird ending you could get where Scrooge McDuck loses his fortune. Crazy. For him, what was he doing for us? He was surging, as far as I could tell. Let me go back and have a look, but I think I'm just going to build him up to be a warrior now that we replaced him. We've got so many people practicing medical science at the moment that it's just kind of a waste of time. Let's give him agility 9 so we can work him up to a better horse in between here and there. We'll increase his shield coverage a bit, and then we'll also make him a bit better with one-handed weapons. Once we find Dirajun, let's upgrade some of these warriors to a Veteranos, and then we'll go to there. Zagut. Oh, we need to get rid of some of these prisoners, too. We've got a bunch of money just sitting around in escrow that we could be taking advantage of. Let's go talk to Nudar and make sure he's here. Okay, he is. So I'm going to break the episode off here because we're stuck are we still supposed to be following him we are it's one of those weird cases where the game didn't break off the quest where you expected it to he has a quest that he wants us to do from his house okay well i guess working from home i work from home right now so that's all good let's go talk to dirajun we're not gonna his ridiculous bull hat haircut i mean there are there are more stylish ways to assemble your follicles amigo let's Talk to him. He wants us to scout something. Radagir, Revaden, and some Buha. Okay, that's not going to be so bad. I mean, it's off to the right over here, but that'll work out. We'll do this, this little scouting quest. And then once we've got our scouter on and we've been like, over 9,000! 
we'll move on and do something else. So we've scouted Ray Vaughn, we needed some Buha, and there it is, and then we needed Radagir, and there it is. And so we get our meow -na 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 -na, which is the happy little tune that we get every single time we win. I wonder if that tune's got a name. It's like the jovial dance of the firefly. Now then, to the Lord's Hall, we'll turn this into Dira June, who appears to have abandoned his place of work. Our tracking skills are working, though, so this is one of the nice things about tracking, is every now and again, you can use them to find somebody that's vanished on you. We're going to follow his trail here, and the color scheme that you're noticing here, as they get closer and closer, it just becomes hot colors, like red. You know. Caravan, I think he went up this way, maybe to... Is this still the same group? Oh, never mind. He canceled the quest. Let's go to Sargoth then. And I'm going to break off the episode here while I look for a ransom broker. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerdcastle for another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I hope to see you tomorrow. And I've been having a lot of fun with the game. I continue to have fun. I never have any complaints about playing Warband. It's one of those games that I can play just absolutely endlessly. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and farewell.